Street Truth and Justice campaign stands firm, rooted in the cause, growing in support and active more now than ever. The ruling class declared war on the miners in the great strike of 84-85. The Tories were determined to exact revenge on the National Union of Mine Workers after they defeated the Tories in 1972 and then effectively threw them out of office in 1974. I stand with you today as a widow of a striking Nottinghamshire miner who stood firm with his comrades for the entire length of the bitter and brutal strike. Many of the 2,000 miners in Knotts went back to work and Harry was just one of 50 miners who stayed out the full length of the strike. He was dragged into the back of police vans. He was arrested on many occasions. He witnessed many examples of police violence and brutality. I was a trade union organiser in Nottinghamshire at the time. Every road into and out of Nottinghamshire was blockaded and you could be arrested for simply turning up or travelling to a working pit. I'm from Easington and we suffered a legitimised state violence seen by many mining communities. Our village was occupied by the police who protected a lone scab. We all remember the deer that was invaded by the riot police in our village. This was on the back of the events of June the 18th when many of our pickets had been to Orgreave. The shocking and brutal events on that day was one of the most violent clashes in British industrial history. The police corralled our pickets and proceeded to batter them with batons and horse charges. All of this was orchestrated. Thatcher was responsible for mobilising the police as a national force. She did that to defeat our labour, our key element of a modern democracy. And then she presided over trumped up charges and false evidence. 71 pickets were charged with riots and 24 were charged with violent disorder. As we know, the trials collapsed when evidence given by police was deemed unreliable. We should never forget our pickets were facing potential life imprisonment for charges of riot. For a time, Thatcher created a police state. She created a police force she thought was beyond accountability. From that flowed the horrors of Hillsborough, a corruption in policing that had taken years to resolve. I'm one of at least 20 women who were deceived into long-term intimate relationships with undercover policemen who were part of secret political policing squads in this country. These relationships lasted as long as seven years and some of the undercover officers even fathered children with the women that they'd been spied on. We now have a public inquiry into undercover policing. It has now been confirmed that secret squads spied on over 1,000 groups in this country since 1968, including the NUM, who is a core participant in the public inquiry. The blacklisting campaign and the Spy Cops campaign shows us that rank and file activists can join together. They spied on the suffragettes, they spied on the ANC, and they spied on the American Civil Rights Movement. All those campaigns have won, and so will we. Amber Rudd said it is not in the public interest to hold an overview inquiry. The Chief Constable of South Yorkshire wants an inquiry. The South Yorkshire Police and Crime Commissioner and other PCCs want an inquiry. Even Peter Bottomley, Conservative Under Secretary of State for Employment in the 84 Thatcher Government, has said there should be an inquiry. The Tories cannot concede a public inquiry into, into our grief. They know it will expose the collusion which led to that police state. Alan Billings, who is the uh, South Yorkshire Police and Crime Commissioner, has been very vocal and supportive. He sent us a message today saying, all Labour Police and Crime Commissioners support the objective of the Orgreave Truth and Justice campaign to achieve a full public inquiry into the events of Orgreave. Here in South Yorkshire, we've brought the police archives into one place and I am funding a professional archivist to catalogue them all. We need closure, and that is as true for the police as for the former miners, their communities, and the public as a whole. The case for a full and independent inquiry is stronger than ever, and I'll tell you why. 
In the last year, we've discovered that South Yorkshire Police holds over 800 files on all grief that were never reviewed by the Home Office nor by the IPCC. Police officers admitted that statements were falsified. And we know more, far more, about how Thatcher abused the power of state to crush the miners. The brutality of all grief will not be forgotten. Diane Abbott, our Shadow Home Secretary, and myself as leader, want to make it absolutely clear that a Labour government will hold an inquiry into all grief so the truth and justice will come out. After 33 years of campaigning by so many people, we have a breakthrough with the announcement of an independent review into the policing of the miners' strike in Scotland. Whilst it's not a full public inquiry, it is without doubt a major step forward. Last Tuesday, the Welsh Government added its support to the inquiry being held by the Scottish Government and will again be writing to the new Home Secretary, supporting calls for an inquiry. This damn wall is cracks in it ever since local councils started to support the Orgreave Truth and Justice campaign called for an independent inquiry into Orgreave. Let's not forget that 206 men were victimised in Scotland area for activities during the dispute of 84-85, second only to the Yorkshire area which was 306 men. It makes those cracks bigger. Let's all hope that we will soon see daylight. We must take heart from the fact that trials will take place this year of the South Yorkshire police officers at the Hillsborough disaster. It shows that justice is still possible. The fight for justice at Orgreave must be heard in the same breath as the justice for the 96. And in the same breath too as the GMB's long campaign for justice for the 37 Camel Laird workers who were imprisoned for a month in a high security jail in 1984 despite never being convicted of any crime. The campaign is essential not only for those miners and their families who were beaten and victimised by the state, but it's also important for the wider political struggle today. If we can right these wrongs, we will be stronger in other battles and other campaigns.